by the end of April, the SPY is going to hit 490 again. I hope you guys have been having a wonderful year. In today's video, I'm going to talk about what my thoughts are for the next steps in the market. We're going to take a look at the S&P, NASDAQ, the Russell, the large tech stocks, all that stuff combined. We're going to have a good video and I'm going to give you guys my thought process on the next steps. All right. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get started. So the first thing that we have to take a look at is NYCB. So New York Community Bank Corp. Today, it is down 23%. And since January, at the end of January, it is down close to 75%. This is important because NYCB has $116 billion in assets. Okay. So now if we remember, so just to backtrack a bit here, right? NYCB is a bank that is failing. Okay. And the last time something like this occurred was last March. So, oh, when the Silicon Valley Bank and the other banks started to fail, it was in March of last year. So, let's see what happened to the market when this occurred last time. So, go to March, nice and simple, March of 2023. Here we go. The market really, really capitulated and it fell very heavily, right? And what ended up happening was the Fed offered a bailout program to these small banks. So the bailout program was essentially meant for these small banks to get some cash because you have a bunch of failing banks, right? But people need money to withdraw, right? So the Fed is like, okay, we're obviously not going to let these banks completely just capitulate. There still needs to be a way for the average person or, you know, people to withdraw money. So the Fed gave a one year loan program that gave banks basically cash and they gave them basically free money at a lower interest rate to help the banks get back on their feet. Okay. That caused the market to bounce. Okay. Because the banking crisis was basically averted, the Fed stepped in, everything was good. Now, the issue is that that Fed bailout program ends on March 11th, which is March 11th is next Monday. So next Monday, all of these small banks are about to get, potentially they're about to get cracked. If they did not do anything in their underlying back end, essentially to make sure that they were profitable and they were positive cash flow, all of these loans need to be paid back. And if these small banks cannot deliver, then the Fed is going to have to figure out a way to bail them out again. Because I, in my opinion, they're not going to um, allow these small banks to just complete, completely capitulate. And um, so that is one sort of warning signal so far. The other warning signal is gold. When gold ramps up like this, it is not the safest sign for banks. Or really, the <laughs> it's not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the correlation of gold versus the S&P during March to see what happened. All right, so now here's a chart of gold, right? The orange line is the SPX. So this is March, okay? This orange line is the SPX. You can see that as the SPX was dying and falling, gold had a big rally. So that is essentially a warning signal, in my opinion, that there's a lot of love coming into gold in anticipation of March 11th, when the banking thing basically, when the Fed's uh, loan program basically ends. And that, in my opinion, is an, in anticipation. The last time gold was skyrocketing like this was because the banking crisis was in full effect. It was already going on. That's why gold started to get these uh, bids. But now gold is getting the bids prior to March 11th. And in my opinion, it's in anticipation. It's not the safest sign for that. So 
That's number two. All right, so now on top of all that, we have Powell giving a speech Wednesday, 10 a.m., and on Thursday, 10 a.m. this week. And then on Friday, we have job numbers. So clearly, he's going to address what's going on basically on March 11th. And it's, you know, there's a lot of ambiguity about what's going to happen. All right. Not to mention, on March 15th, the Friday of that same week, right here, right? It's triple witching. So triple witching is when options expire on the same day. That is generally very bearish afterward. What happens to the market afterward is generally bearish. Now, it's not a guarantee. We could get a Fed um, bailout program again. <clears throat> Powell, can, <laughs> Powell can give some good... <laughs> Powell can give some good news. <clears throat> Things can go well. <clears throat> but there's a lot of bullcrap uh, right around the corner. Okay. This is not even including. This is not even include. This is not even including the fact that there is most likely going to be tax selling. So all of this combined is why I think the market is going to get its very, very likely to get a pullback to 490 on the SPY. Now, let me show you guys a chart of the SPY. So now, I don't want to call tops, but so this is a chart of the SPY. I don't, we should get a pullback maximum. I don't think we should break above 518, 520. Um, that's my thought process. We'll see if that plays true, but this is a chart of the SPY, right? And we are currently at the 4.236% FIB from the FIB level that I drew back in December. So from the high here on um, December 28th to the low of January 5th, the FIB extension is currently acting perfectly as resistance. And this is clearly very overextended to the upside. Obviously, this is a very, very bullish move overall primarily led by chips so nvidia and amd are both going crazy the only way this move continues is if amd and nvidia can continue now what will most likely end up happening right in the short term what will most likely end up happening is Hopefully, the Fed comes to some sort of bailout program. Um, that will cause the market to get some sort of stability, right? We will get a bit of a continued move to the upside. But once all of the terrible news is behind us, right? Once the Fed steps in, which they will most likely have to step in, right? Once the Fed steps in, what overall, what's going to end up happening, in my opinion, on with the sector is money is going to go out of NVIDIA and out of AMD into the losers. So I think it's going to go into Apple. It's going to go into Meta. I think it's going to go into Netflix. I think, so Meta and Netflix are not losers, but I think it's going to go into um, the beaten down stocks, specifically Apple, Tesla. Um, I personally also really like the setups on Meta. Netflix, not necessarily on Google, um, but specifically, Apple is a very, very, very big player in the space. If Apple does not reclaim uh, 180 soon, this can potentially be a very, very big uh, warning signal. Personally, I think it's a good time um, probably to sell some puts on Apple. Um, or to grab some calls. It's too much blood on the streets. Uh, and um, if bids start coming in on Apple and these other losers, NVIDIA and AMD have a chance to take a break. Once NVIDIA and AMD have a chance to take a break and the money flows back into the losers, Apple, etc., etc., while the IWM continues to just kill it and do well, while the Fed... Uh, continues to step in and protect these small banks from imploding. 
this market can make another high to around 518, 520, right? But overall, we will almost, I can almost guarantee, I'm not going to say guarantee, but I'm very, very confident that we should get a pullback to this zone right here. 485 to 495. It's a very big zone, obviously, but I really think that we're going to see 490. And um, it would be a nice little pullback. How much would the pullback be if we pulled back from right here? 490. 5%. How much would it be if we came from 420? To, okay, 4, uh, sorry, 520. So from 519 to 490, that's about a 5.5%. Okay, that's nothing. This would give an opportunity to get a pullback for because once we get down to these levels, if the market is still intact and it's not just completely just obliterated in terms of macro, there's not something like catastrophic. If something catastrophic has not occurred, this 480, 490, this entire zone of prior level of support from 477, 50, all of this is delicious delicious long opportunity or long term in my opinion at this point all of this right here it's a dip buying opportunity because if 2024 is going to end up green which most likely it is right this is going to be the best opportunity to hold on uh i think especially if this occurs during um beginning of I mean, it will most likely occur um, sometime in April, May. This can be pretty good, in my opinion. All right, so now this is a yearly chart of the S&P. We started the year off at 472. If the SPY comes back to 480, 485, that is assuming that the SPY is going to be green for the year, right? Currently, the SPY is up almost 8% for the year. If we fall back down to 480, ideally, if we turn red for the year, in my opinion, those are good dip buying opportunities because my outlook on the market for this year is um, should continue to rise. Now, I am bearish March and April, but I'm bearish to get a um, pullback. And that's essentially what I want. But currently... You know, uh, we are long on the IWM. We're long on, you know, some other stocks. The swings are doing really well. And um, we're also long on gold. The swings are doing really well. So, but now it's getting to a point where things are getting a little frothy at the top. Things are getting really, really, like, tough to be long up here. It makes the most sense to get a pullback. I did not mention a single word. I did not mention a single word about getting into puts. I did not even make a video. I was not entering into puts at all. No swing puts, nothing. I was going long on everything. But now, bulls are starting to get very, very overconfident. There's too much going on in the next two, next few weeks. Um, March and April, it's just, there's too much going on. Um, and even if we do make another leg up, it's really, really difficult to be extremely, extremely bullish. So that's why um, I think that the market should be getting a pullback for all of those reasons combined. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good one.